This is a good example and segue into axle friction. So we have a bracket that has kind of a sleeve around this three inch diameter pipe. We're given a few dimensions here and the friction coefficient. And we want to figure out this distance X that we can put a weight on here that it would not slide down the pipe. And we're saying neglect the weight of the bracket, that that weight at the end is going to be larger. For these problems, the friction does not act along the entire ring. And what I want you to imagine is that this is on here loose. And think about the points where that ring is actually leaning against the pipe. And so the friction force here and the normal force is only going to act on one point on that ring. So when we draw the free body diagram for this, you have to think about how it's leaning on the pipe and what point is the friction and normal force acting on it. And this will come into play in the future when we look at wheel and axle friction as well. Okay, so here, here is how we would draw the free body diagram again. So we have not the force along the entire thing, but we have it acting just at that leftmost point at the top ring, and then that right point on the bottom ring. So that's a really important concept to think about where the friction is actually acting in those ring systems, the sleeves. Okay. Now that we have a good free body diagram, we can look at forces in the x and y direction. So in the x direction, we have normal forces. So going one way and the other way, those add to zero. So we can say the normal forces are equal and opposite to one another. They both have the same magnitude. Okay, in the y direction, we have friction holding it up and the weight acting down. So we can look at the friction coefficient is the same for both sides. The normal force is the same for both sides. So let's go ahead and just call that normal force N since it's the same either way. And we can plug in the friction coefficient. Let's see, from the problem statement, it was 0 0.25. And since we have two of those normal forces, then we can say two times 0 0.25. So we have 0 0.5 times N is what that weight is. So there's one relationship here. Okay, we still don't have anything for that distance X. So we need one more equation and that is the moment. So what point should we take the moment around? Either A or B will be fine. Let's go ahead and take the moment around point B. So this is that lower right-hand corner with that bottom sleeve that we're going to take the moment around. From B up to normal A and the friction force at A. So let's think about the perpendicular R cross F going on here. So we go up six inches to that normal force at A. And if you think about which direction that's rotating it, that would be a positive moment. So we have positive six times the normal force at A. And it's a good idea to kind of draw those cross products out and think about what direction that moment is going in. How about the friction force at A? So for this case, my radius is going through the pipe at three over to the friction force going up, and this would be a negative moment. Remember, clockwise is negative, so we could say minus three times that friction force at A. And we have one more moment to calculate, and that is gonna be going over to that weight. So again, if you draw in the line of action of a force, that will help you really see those perpendicular relationships. So the distance to weight, and it's not the entire X. X goes to the middle of that pipe, so we have to subtract off half of that diameter. So this is gonna be X minus 1.5, and it's going clockwise, so this is gonna be a negative moment, so we're going out. So here's the distance, X minus 1.5 times weight. 
And if we add the moments, they should add to zero because we are in statics and everything adds to zero. Okay, plugging in that friction coefficient and knowing the relationship between our normal force and weight that we got from adding our forces together. So we know our normal force is two times the weight and we know our friction coefficient was 0.25, so three times 0.25 and then normal force is two weights. And what this does for us is we have an equation where the only variables left are weight and position x. And you can see the weight would cancel out of all of this. So we get a position of 12 inches. Interesting in this that it doesn't matter what the magnitude of that force was. It doesn't matter what the weight was. That position, 12 inches, is going to hold for any load that is applied to that bracket. So kind of interesting.